detective sees him and just runs off. Oh, um, that's a cameo from, uh, what's Boone, right? Yeah, Mark Boone Jr. Yes. Who is, uh, speaking of Christopher Nolan, who's, like, one of Nolan's friends because he's in Memento and he's in Batman Begins. But he's, he, uh, he's, he's the private detective. But there's... You know, they're they're in the the cafeteria. They see everyone, and then the security guards come rushing in, and start shooting, and and end up killing Feingold. Like in the process, he gets in, he gets caught in the crossfire with huge ass automatic weapons. They just yeah, they're, they're like the same weapons they shot the shit out of Christine's apartment with. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so like Feingold gets dropped. Uh, Nick grabs Christine, runs up. They get to the roof, and. Uh, you know, Christine's trying to convince him that, you know, this is all a hoax, it's all a game, whatever. Like, this was all supposed to happen. And then, then she realizes the pistol that he has is not the pistol that he should have taken off of the guard. It's his own gun. And then she really freaks out. And uh, Deborah Kara Unger's really good in that scene, trying to convince him that everything is okay no like you know everything is is fine this is this is all part of the game and then when she sees the gun she really starts freaking out that wait where did you get that we didn't find that when we searched your house and you know and he tells her well you know you didn't look you didn't know where to look or you didn't look well enough and then she's really freaked out because she knows this is for real he's got a real gun you know he's He's threatening to shoot her. And it's that that climactic scene on top of the roof is is fantastic, you know? He's he's asking about what about this, what about this, and she's explaining to him like it's all part of the game, you know. You you we talked about the, the cab going underwater. She says, you know, there were divers there. They were there to get you out in case you didn't you didn't get out on your own so he wasn't going to be left for dead they were going to save him if he needed it there was always a safety net and now that safety net is taken away because he's got a gun that they didn't count on like everything you know she explains you know the the apartment it's all squibs it's all special effects it's it was all set up but she's she's really freaking out over the over the the gun, and then you know people are starting to come through the, trying to get onto the roof. Yeah, they're sawing through the door. Yeah, and Nick is just like real crazy now, and she she's on the radio just trying to say, hey, you know we have a real gun up here, you know, you need to do something. Don't come through the door. And then the door opens. You know, she's trying to convince him, hey, it's it's your birthday. Everyone's here for your birthday. You know, Conrad's on the other side of the door. Like, you know, what about, you know, what about Feingold? I think she explains that Feingold was, you know, that's all special effects. But it's, it's crazy. And then the door opens up and without... You know, without paying attention, he, Nick just immediately reacts and shoots and ends up shooting Conrad. And, you know, the, the look on Penn's face is pretty great where he's he's shot. And, you know, Christine freaks out. Feingold freaks out. They're trying to save him. They're trying to revive him. Uh, Feingold makes the comment that, you know, we're all going to jail someone's dead and just completely freaks out and then Nick realizing what he's done and you know how distraught he is steps onto the roof and uh, jumps off and then there's there's a great sequence where you see him like falling off of the building you know falling past the the floors yeah because it's a huge skyscraper so he's falling for quite a while yeah and then he crashes through the, the skylight. 
and lands onto a big, you know, big air cushion, a big X on the air cushion. But before we forget, I don't, and I'm not sure if you if you noticed this or maybe you saw it in your research, but I believe Spike Jones is one of the first EMTs. Spike Jones, and do you know who the other guy is? Uh, no. The other guy is Michael Massey, who is um, who was in Seven. He's the guy that was running like the the like the not the the shop that makes the the blade the dildo with the blade on it. Yeah. He's the guy that runs like the the sex, the the, the like the sex club that they find the, the dead prostitute and um, legal endorser, and he's the guy behind the glass. The cops are trying to get him to come out. Yeah. And then uh, the the next scene or two is um, Brad Pitt's interviewing him in the room. So he he pops up again in, in this movie as the other EMT with Spike Jones. Which I, I think that Fincher and Jones knew each other. Because of uh, their uh, music video. Um, I think they were worked under the same banner for for a while. Propaganda films, yeah. yeah. The, the kind of psych out on the roof um, where they make you think that Conrad is accidentally killed by, by Nick. And then he takes that, you know, the tumble down off the building to take himself out the way that his his late dad did but which then is, which is well, watching it was like really fucked up it's like oh they anticipated him doing that yeah they that was what they were counting on yeah <laughs> like by all those all those uh tests and uh psychological evaluations because uh, that's that's what they were hoping because Feingold in the background even says on the roof, oh, like they told me, like if you didn't jump, that they wanted me to throw you off. Yeah, I was I was supposed to push you. But like they, they figured he would jump. That's fucking crazy. What if, what if he didn't jump off that side of the building? Yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm a, yeah, it was just like, how did they get this right side, you know, or like the that he was going to jump from that specific area to land perf- yeah. perfectly in the, on the air mat. But, you know, well, but, bit of a plot hole, but you know what I say? It's a fucking movie. Yeah. Plus they had all those people on the, on the roof watching him. It, yeah. You know, if, if something was going wrong, I'm sure they would have, I would assume they would have stopped him, you know, but they, like, yeah. If, if, if he goes to the opposite side of the roof or something. And the, the line that he gives uh, Reborn at the zoo when he pulls the gun on him and tells him that he wants to know where, uh, you know, he wants him, he wants Reborn to take him inside CRS. As you know, I am extremely dangerous. You know, he's trying to be calm, but he like literally just sticks a gun right in underneath his chin and says, I am extremely dangerous. So he does the swan dive, he comes out, he lands on the, the cushion, and then it's, surprise, it's his real birthday party. <laughs> and, you know, everyone is there. Yeah, friends, family, all surrounding. Yeah, they, they make the joke like, you know, that's a hell of an entrance. You know, you, you see, you see Conrad, he's okay, you know, he's got the... He's got the blood stain on his shirt, but he's he's fine. It's it's all fake. And then Douglas like really breaks down seeing it. And he and shows him he shows him that that dumb shirt. Yeah, the, <laughs> I was, got I got drugged and left for dead in Mexico. And all I got was this stupid shirt. Sure. <laughs> And then there's, you know, there's the party scene, and and Rayborn's really good in that. You see him like just dancing in the background, and shirts sure like covered in the fake blood. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, uh, you know, there's the the funny bit where you see the the guy that you saw previously in the airport that was kind of giving Douglas the the evil eye when uh. Then he points to his, his shirt to indicate that the pen had leaked. He's the guy with the bill. 
and Conrad's paying the bill, and then uh, says, "Oh my God, you know, you, you wouldn't believe, you wouldn't believe what they're charging." And then you know, Nick's got a good line where he says, "One split," it, and then he says, "Oh God, yes." And then he shows him. I think it's off screen. We don't get to see it, but he shows him like the bill. Oh yeah, it's it's got to be like in the tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> Pretty, pretty amount of shit that that goes on in this movie. But then, uh, like I said, he's got the he's got the scene with his ex wife and the new husband, and he's he's much warmer and uh, accepting towards them. And then at the at the you know the end, he he goes to talk to Christine, and she says that she's leaving to go to Australia because they have a, a job down there, and then. You know, he says, "Hey, I never really asked, you know, your name and where you're from and all that." And even she can't really remember where she's from because she's been doing the job so long. But he says, "You know, hey, when you get back, would you like to have dinner?" And she says, "Yes." Or you know, why don't you come to the airport with me? You know, we got some time. And he's kind of he kind of just stands there hesitant, and then like the white rabbit kicks in again. Yeah. And it's almost to me when I watch it, it's like, wait, is this is this game over yet? Because the White Rabbit queues up, and it's like, oh, it might still be going on. You never really know, even at the very end, if uh, if it's really over. Very Nolan esque. Yeah, that's that's my take on it at least. Maybe White Rabbit was just the cool music cue that Fincher puts in the end credits, but maybe, uh, you know, maybe it kind of indicates that, you know, things might still be happening. Who knows? I just, watching the movie, it's, you know, seeing it at the end, you know, realizing that it really was all a game. It really is all fake. You realize, like, how much stuff was all uh, planned out and how much stuff was a setup because even at the very beginning you know when he's kind of hesitant about the CRS stuff still and he's in the club and those two guys are talking about CRS yeah. he overhears them those guys were plants they weren't real people yeah and they were actors talking about CRS trying to get his his uh, interest peaked he meets that's why he's so easily able to meet up with them again in the bar right yeah and then he asks them like what their experience is with and they're just very cryptic and weird about yeah the guy the guy gives them the bible verse yep uh where i was blind now i can see why did, i can't believe i'm gonna say this i can't believe i'm gonna give those movies any kind of any kind of credence <laughs> but watching this it's kind of like this is a super classy well I shouldn't say this is super classy Saw is a very like low budget grimy torture porn version of the game it's funny you say that because um um Susie was like thought that that's where it was going and she was like oh is this gonna be like Saw cause I'll just leave then right now (laughs) and I'm like Come on, you really think Chris is going to be all, like, down for a movie that's just like Saw? Like, no, dude. (laughs) It's just hilarious. Wasn't the point of at least the early movie or two, wasn't the point that, oh, like, I'm going to put you through this shitty experience and then you're going to be grateful that you're alive? Yeah, like, in an, uh, an, uh, they have, like, a an epiphany or whatever you however you want to yeah. say it but they're yeah they're able to appreciate what they have based on that experience so saw is a a uh much lesser um rip off of of the game but i will i have to give credit to at least for the first one uh, James Wan and Lee Whannell are pretty rad, and they're talented in their own right. I would agree, but not that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they hit their stride until probably Insidious. Okay, okay. Yeah, then watching watching the movie, I was like, oh, 
I think the Saw movies tried to kind of go in this direction.